Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for another weekly favorites video, and so I'm just going to jump right in and get started. Um, this week, one of the first things I was using is a eau de toilette spray, and this is from Victoria's Secret. And I've had this for quite some time, but this is the Pear Glace. This is from way back in the day. Uh, this was a scent that, you know, Bath and Body Works really kind of uh, hit the scene and really hit the ground running. And Victoria's Secret, <clears throat> before they bought them, um, started to create products to try to match what they were doing. And uh, so when Victoria's Secret first started doing all of their fragrance and bath and body products, this was one of the very first ones that um, I liked. And it's, you know, one of the first ones that they ever sold. And... Um, I went really crazy with it. This was like my all-time favorite scent at the time. You know, that was heavy-duty layering days. You know, everybody layered then. You did the shower gel and the body lotion and the scent. And um, these were really good at the time. They were the kind of scent that people around you when you went somewhere would be like, gosh, you smell really good, what are you wearing? Or you would go somewhere and somebody would say, you're wearing blah, 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 and, you know, because they they liked it too. And it was just a really kind of popular thing. So this was really my favorite. It's part of the garden collection. And I wore it to death. And then I kind of, I, I kind of got sick of it years later. It took a long time for me to get sick of it. And I do still like it now, but I don't like it like I did then. I mean, I loved it then, and I, there's still some remnants of me kind of being sick of it now, but I do, I'm back to liking it now. So, anyway, pulled it out, the little bottle, this is one of the small bottles, looks like that. And these small bottles don't even have, you know, descriptions or anything on them, but, you know, it's just, I mean, a straight up pear, and it's kind of an acidic pear, and... Uh, you know, if you think of like sour apple, when sour apple has sort of that that bite, this is kind of an acidic pear that has that little bit of bite. So, pulled that out and have been wearing that again and enjoying it. Um, I have also been using a new, another new shampoo conditioner kind of regimen, but I still, um, they're samples and I haven't gotten far enough down in the samples where I really feel like getting it out of my shower and taking the risk of spilling it all over. <laughs> so I think I'm going to wait uh, a couple more days and continue to use it and I'll probably, it'll probably be in next week's favorites. But anyway, the next product is a deodorant that was sent to me. This is the Toms of Maine 24 hour natural odor protection, long lasting aluminum free deodorant in the scent wild lavender looks like this and um, let's see what it says on the back what makes the product good it toms and includes how we make it no animal testing or animal ingredients no artificial colors flavors fragrance or preservatives we share every ingredient its purpose and its source at tomsmain.com sustainable practices are a priority in every aspect of our business we strive to maximize recycled content and recyclability of our packaging 5%, which is 12 days of employee time, goes to volunteering. 10% of the profits go to human and environmental goodness. And this does have an expiration date. It's May 28th of 2016, which you don't very often see expiration dates on deodorant. The reason that there is one on this is because it does have, you know, natural ingredients. So, it's a, you know, it's just a stick. But it's almost like, um, it's not like your normal stick. It's almost like a jelly it's not like a jelly. <laughs> it's a, it's like a normal solid stick, but you won't be able to see it there, but it, it almost has a clearness to it, sort of like um, a solid gel or something. It's not like a gel deodorant at all, though. It is like a stick. And when I first pulled the cap off of this the very first time, the lavender fragrance was like, like hit me like a truck. But after I opened it that first time, it really has pretty much gone away. You get like a hint of it, but there's kind of a m medicinal um, scent to this more than I get the lavender. And that's just because it has a lot of natural ingredients in it. And so those other ingredients are um, kind of beating out the wild lavender fragrance, which 
it's fine with me because I'm not a huge lavender fan anyway. I mean, I don't really care for the medicinal scent, but. Now, I will tell you with natural deodorants and with any kind of deodorant that is not an antiperspirant, I really don't. I have tested those in the daytime before, but I really don't wear them in the daytime these days. What I like to do with them is I like to, after I take my evening shower, I shower twice a day. I shower once in the morning and once at night. So after I take my evening shower, I put on a natural deodorant for the overnight period for when I'm sleeping because I'm not going to be doing like strenuous, you know, exercise or running or, you know, anything that's going to make me like super stinky or super sweaty. And so I like to use those at night because it gives me, you know, six, eight, however many hours, um, depending on when I take my shower, uh, to not have parabens and the aluminum or other ingredients that can be in antiperspirants on my skin. So I take all night and I take a break from those materials. And then in the morning, I take my morning shower and then I put on an antiperspirant deodorant. So that's what I've been doing. I've been, you know, testing this out at night and it's worked just fine, just like other, um, you know, natural deodorants that I've used and liked. And I have to say, I really like Tom's of Maine. I really like the stance they take with all of their, you know, all the things that they're trying to be conscious about. Um, now, of course, it could just be a marketing thing. I don't, you know, I'm not, I've not been there to know, like, what are they really doing? But um, I really like companies that are this focused on all of these, you know, good things for the environment, good things for animals, good things for their neighborhood, you know, all of that kind of thing. So good things for us. So I really, really like Tom's and Maine. And I would say check them out. They, they have other products like um, toothpaste and mouthwash type stuff too. So uh, check them out if you've never taken, taken a peek at them. On the eyes, I have pulled out my Avon Wrapped in Velvet eye palette. And the one that I pulled out is the Crushed Velvet palette. Now this was a seasonal palette. This is just the box. This was a seasonal palette from last fall, was it spring or fall? I don't remember, but it was last year. And you really can't, I mean, you can't buy them anymore. But if you've got it, pull it out. Um, the palette looked like this. And hopefully you can see the colors. It's a little dreary today, but um, this is kind of a pinky purple, and this is kind of a, a taupey brown, but it almost has a little bit of purple to it. This is a black, but this is intended to be an eyeliner. And um, I'm wearing this today. I'm wearing, basically I have this color just all over the lid, um, you know, kind of as the base. And then I have my normal green uh, eyeshadow that you guys see me wear a million times, kind of in the outer crease with my normal white kind of under the brow bone and just you know fun colors I'll go ahead and swatch them for you what the hey um if you've got this palette get it out <laughs> put some use to it these colors are going to be great for fall so um you know a nice one to pull out for fall anyway just really pretty I have really had a fun time wearing it again this week and I didn't swatch the thumb one very well, but it's black. You get the idea. And um, it's a palette I really like. It's one I wish they would have had longer. But And these were all kind of metallic-y um, shadows. They gave you know a lot of shine, um, some texture to the eye. They're supposed to have a velvet finish, and they really did. And so I really like them. And the next makeup item is one of my lipstick picks of the month. And if you didn't see that video, I'll have it linked down in the information, information bar. Don't forget to check out the information bar because I'm putting all kinds of stuff down in there these days. Um, you know, trying to, I don't know, I was trying to give you the information that, like, most people give down there for the longest time. But I, I like this to be more personal. So I'm going to be giving you all kinds of information down in there <laughs> moving forward just because I can. So this is one of my picks for the month of August. It's the Revlon Color Burst Lip Butter. It's number 53 in Sorbet. No, you can't see that. My camera doesn't focus that close. Nice bright pink color. Um, gives you a lot of shine. There's, you know, a hint of sheerness, but it's, you know, plenty of pigmentation there. I'm actually wearing it right now. 
really have enjoyed this this week. And um, as always, one of the things that I did with it was I took my Avon Glimmer Sticks Lip Liner in Red Brick, which is kind of right now my everyday go-to um, lip color that in my everyday makeup routine I normally use. And I lined my lips with it and then filled the lips in. So I created sort of a base and then I put this over the top of it. And wow, it <laughs> this might be one of my my most favorite combinations ever because I can you see in there it makes the prettiest most um not intense but just the prettiest like rose color that I really have seen I think ever in lip products I've never seen a rose colored lipstick that was as pretty as as the finish that this comes up with so um, another little experimentation for you to try if you have the red brick already um, give it a try underneath it if you don't have it and you would like one then you can go to my website below and order one they're extremely affordable so um, loving that combination and then the last thing I did this last week um, I decided to do it again this is something I finished up I've been holding on to this to show you guys and I keep forgetting um, this is the Kroger brand, so if you have like Kroger's, Ralph's, like any of those stores, they probably have them. Kroger's should have them for sure. I, I'm pretty sure probably the other uh, store names within the whole conglomerate probably have their version as well. But it's the Kroger brand of the Hot Buffalo Style Pretzel Pieces. The bag looks like this. And um, let's just be real, I'm not recommending these to you because they're a healthy snack option. Because they're not, they are a tasty snack option. <laughs> so this might need to be a treat for you sometimes or whatever. But um, it's not the health purposes, it, it tastes good. So it's naturally flavored. There's no MSG added. There is MSG in it because it is... Um, you know, it occurs in yeast extract, which is an ingredient in these, but they don't add any additional MSG for flavoring purposes, which I appreciate because I am sensitive to MSG and most people are and don't realize it. All those headaches you keep getting and, you know, uh, medicine doesn't make it go away and you feel swollen and puffy and sluggish and you feel really tired after you eat. Yeah. Food allergies. Could be MSG, could be gluten, could be, you know, a lot of things, but yeah. Um, zero trans fats. So we like no trans fats, but there's a lot of fat in this. There's, you know, five grams of fat and two and a half grams of saturated fat. Um, there about a third of a cup is a serving. So it's not a huge serving and there's about 10 servings in a bag, but it's 130 calories. So calorie wise, it could be worse. You know, if you, uh, I mean, definitely if you're trading out like a combo meal from somewhere for this you're doing better right <laughs> but you know the calories the 130 calories that's you know about an hour and mm, a third ish um calories for me i i i do really well when i do uh, when i eat 100 calories per hour per waking hour so if i'm awake for i always try to stop eating a couple hours before i go to bed um, so let's say if I'm going to be awake for 16 hours, I might only utilize calories for 12 of those hours. I'm going to stop eating about the 12 hour mark. So if I eat 100 calories for every hour that I'm awake and I spread them out throughout the day, um, then that's, I usually do really well, you know, weight wise and, um, hunger wise and, you know, metabolism wise, all of that kind of thing. So you know, 130, I mean, you can eat a few of these, and you know, a third of a cup, and that'll get you through an hour and a third, and then just be careful about all the other things that you eat for the rest of the day. Um, there is two grams of protein in it, so that's not bad. Monounsaturated fat is two grams. And 15% um, of iron, which, um, you know, iron is important in people's diet. I, I'm anemic all the time, so I, I take quite a bit of iron. I think a lot of people are anemic and don't know that they are. And the older we get, especially women, we lose our ability to absorb iron. So 
you know, let's say uh, even when you're healthy, let's say you eat 100% of your vitamin, of your iron intake for the day, um, you're still only going to absorb a small portion of that, and so you actually need to intake more than you need because you can't absorb all of it. And as women get older, we get we lose our ability to absorb it as well as in the past. So we need even more to then supplement what we actually need in our body. So, you know, for me, anything that has iron in it is good. This does have enriched wheat flour. And so, um, you know, for me, I, I need to kind of stay gluten free because gluten is not good for me. Um, so this isn't the best pick for me for that, but I can say, I mean, I didn't really eat this, you know, by the fistful either, but I can say that, um, you know, I didn't really necessarily feel like super sick. I've definitely had other things that made me feel much more sick. So there's that. Um, one thing I will say though, is the hot, with it being a hot Buffalo style, this to me is not a hot Buffalo style. It's almost like a sweet Buffalo style. So, um, I love spicy foods. It's not what I would pick for my Buffalo, like craving needs. Um, but I think across the board, most people would enjoy the flavor and there are other flavors to choose from. So food item for the week, something I tried that's uh, new out on the market. And I think that's it for this week. So if you have any questions about any of these products, then let me know. And not as many products this time. Like I said, I have a few that I kind of am holding back because I want to wait and talk about those later when I use them up a little bit more. All right. I think that's it, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.